Hey, out for a walk from the Spring Hill, Brooksville, Florida area. As you can see, it's relatively flat. Palm trees were planted, most likely. Few grow naturally, but you can see it's, it's not all palm trees. A lot of wooded trees. Sometimes you look around and say, yeah, it's, looks like Georgia or something. Yeah, we're close to Georgia. But you get a, it gets hot in Florida, but the trick is to get out early or go out at night. And it starts to get a little cooler. The mornings are cooler. Even when it says the humidity is high, in the morning it's still damp, it, it's not right. Whatever they say, 80-90% humidity, you get out and you're like, this is nothing. This is nothing. They don't ever get that right. Wonderful day to walk. People out. Nice neighborhood. Got a street across the way, you can barely hear it. Well, it's nice. People retire here. Spring Hill, Brook Brooksville is a nice area. It's further from the coast, so you get a break from the storms a little bit. Not quite as far as Ocala or Orlando. That's more of the central of the state, so the storms can die down more. Basically, you will pay in a nice area like this, a little in taxes, but not quite as bad as Orlando or Miami or Tampa or something like that. And your insurance for Tampa, Miami is gonna be much worse because of the storms. And flood insurance. Gotta know where your flood zones are. Even in the central areas like Ocala and Orlando. So definitely Brooksville, Spring Hill area. You know, chat and see if you, do you need it? Will it ever flood? With global warming and in Florida, the politics of it say they call it nuisance flooding. They don't want to use the word global warming and whatever. You know, you just take it as you see it. You don't get the snow like you used to. I came from Charlotte, North Carolina. We rarely got snow and sleep. Probably get one day shut the businesses down, give it a day or two to melt. That was it. And you were expected to be at work. <sighs> yeah. Kids would get out of school early if it started snowing. But here, the odds of seeing a little snow is just really remote, just pretty. You get out in and go, oh, look, snow, snow. Cool. Mm. Not that it would stick. You get up to Ocala, it gets a little cooler. Jacksonville, you're right up there at Georgia. You might get a little flakes, get some frosty weather every once in a great while, but it's not, you know, be gone. Midday, it'd be 70 degrees probably. So that's the way it is around here. In the winter, it gets a little cool in the morning for a walk, but you just wait a little bit, you walk a little later. You can get a nice almost every day if it's not raining. In the summer in Florida, it rains and storms. The July has just been almost every night, just boom, boom, boom. Rain, cat hides under the bed. You know, our cat likes to, we have a little nye, so he likes to go out in the little lanai and just sit and look at the birds and the lizards. Earthworms come out sometimes and squirrels squawk at him because they know they can't get him. And he respects the little nye, he never tries to rip through it or anything. He knows he's stuck there. And he, he hangs out. And then when he gets tired, he wants to come back in. Unlike a dog that would bark at everything, depending on the breeds. Saw a cute chihuahua today at the Target. Rode my bike, got a little exercise in it, and I'm doing a little walk. Picked up two things at the Target, grocery-wise. A little something for my wife. And that's the motivation. You get out, get a little exercise. The walking must have to get a bike. Slowly build your way up. Hopefully, there are some trails nearby here. Always find new ways to get places. I found a sidewalk that was like this wide. 
but like concrete barrier here and rope. And then a fence started here. So it was real narrow. I was like, eh. It was a quick way to get there. I could get to Publix or Walmart market just like that. But I don't think I'll try it again. Because you have to kind of, when you're on a bike, you have to yield to those people walking. Where are you going to yield to? You got to stop and get off and kind of hand do the bike. You don't want to take a chance on wobbling just a touch and clip somebody that's walking. They have nowhere to go. So I didn't like it. If something were to happen and I took a fall or something, I'd be in the street. That was crazy. But you know, Sunday morning, it's nice, no traffic. I took the trail up to the, where the interstate crosses. Target was just right around to the left. No problem. I looked, no cars. I took the left onto the street and rode all the way to Target and they have a right lane that kind of breaks off. Boom. I was away from traffic. There was some cars getting ready to come, but they were so far away, I didn't care. And I got on the right side and pulled into the entrance for their Target, McDonald's, different stores. It was easy. No big deal. So you guys get out and walk, get a little exercise. It's a little warm now. I was messing with some weeds and then I decided to walk. Wearing a black shirt. You don't wear a black shirt in Florida. Black colors absorb light, white colors reflect light. So white colors or light colors are cooler. I just had this on. I went for my ride and it was no big deal, but now it's getting, well, it's, what is it? 9.30, it's getting a little warmer, a little more humid. And so there's a little more sweat. So when I go in, I cheat, I hang the shirt up in the garage on a plastic hanger. I always use a plastic, because if it's wet and damp, even though it's gonna be warm in that garage and it's gonna dry, you don't want that hanger, metal hanger to rust. And then you got a new problem. You got your nice white shirt hanging there. You got these little brown dots coming down. And you're like, what's that? That's rust. You just got, ru you just rusted, you know. So you always use plastic. So just hang your stuff up, go in the house. You're all sweaty. Stuff will dry in the garage. Go back and get it the next day or later that night and throw it in the laundry. No big deal. Alrighty. We got new street lights here. Even brighter than the old ones. Yeah, I head down a cul-de-sac, cross over. Used to have a nice palm over here, but it got old, aged, and died. Well, my recommendation if you ever come to Florida is get a arborist to recommend your plants. Don't just go to the store and say that's pretty, I'm gonna plant that the arborist will go well that's not native to this area so it may not survive what <laughs> and some areas get diseases for palm trees and you know they'll say well you know you're you got the disease on your palm tree you got to pull it up and plant something else like a different palm no no more palm in that spot you got to plant a regular tree or a bush or something so it's nice having a palm tree or two planted in front of your house because it's Florida. You know, you want it to look like Florida. Look at this. Pretty palms. A little close, I think, to the house. I would want to know where my drains are and my water lines. But nice to the glass. So I recommend everyone get out and walk. Walk, walk, walk. Just a little walk. Into the street and back. Start slow. Next day, go a little further, a little further. I had surgery one time and I had to wait several weeks before I could get out. And my first one was just, I'm just going around the block, going around the block. So my wife went with me and she wanted to go further. And I'm like, it's my first day after surgery. No, I'm not going to do it. Even though I felt pretty good. No, let's not push it. And next time I went out a little further into the cul-de-sac, out around the block into the cul-de-sac from the block, which is connected, and boom, a little further, a little further. There's a place at the end of the road I could go to. Come back, boom. 
So if any of you getting motivated to get a bike, if you've got a bike, oil the chain, pump the tires up, and enjoy a nice little relaxing ride. And get used to it, get you a helmet. You should keep your helmets three years and replace them. The foamy stuff gets kind of old then, it may not protect your head. Crack your skull open. And basically, you only got one skull and you can act like, well, the helmet gets hot. I don't want it. We'll get a white helmet or a yellow helmet or something. Something bright so people can see you. But just ride. Just enjoy a nice ride around the block in the neighborhood. Get it. You're worried about traffic. Turn. Look over your shoulder a lot. Or get a mirror. You can't turn like you used to. I know I can't. <laughs> get a mirror. It's easy. And technically, you could loosen the helmet and put a hat on for a visor. Get some of those sh cool shades the bikers wear to keep the wind out of your eyes. I've got my own kind of shades. I never really worried about this bright sun. If, it, if I turned into it, I would just, whatever, <laughs> it'd be gone in a second. But having the trails nearby is neat. Other people ride their vehicles, unload their bikes near a school nearby or park or an area there, some trails have areas where you can stop and go to the bathroom, park your car, get your bike out, and they have that here, down the road a ways. But I've seen it, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. So, get out and ride. There's no excuse. Just Sunday morning, Saturday morning, everyone's out. Just ride, walk, you know, slowly build up to it. Take a day, take a week. A couple months later, add a little bit to your walk to the point where I've done, you know, three miles around the neighborhood and it gets a little, it'll get too hot today because I've already rode my bike. But, you know, I'm not a marathon runner or a bike rider. But my doctor said all my numbers were up, which was good, thumbs up. And I told him I've been riding and he's like, oh good, you get out and ride some more. And I said, okay. My wife rides just a touch. She's a little worried about the bike, so she'll walk a little more. And that's what we'll do. We'll go out for a walk. But she worries about the humidity. And I'm like, it's fake. <laughs> it's not. You just get out and go. Either it feels hot or it doesn't. If it doesn't, you just go walking. In the early morning, it's going to be less. In the evening, it's still going to be a little warm, even though it's starting to get a little twilighty. But you know, you know how long it'll take you to walk around the block for two, do your little walk. And you can look on the apps on your phone to see when sunset is, or if it's gonna rain. You know, you don't wanna get too far from home. I usually never get too far from home when I'm walking. I occasionally do when I'm riding the bike. I'm learning online how to change a tire if push comes to shove and fix a flat and all that. So I've got the tools and the patch kit and all that. Need to get an inner tube put in my little stuff so I, they say you just change the tube and we'll deal with the flat later but you gotta check the inside of the tire for whatever made it go flat in the first place get rid of that or you'll have a second flat and I thought that's fine but usually I could walk the bike back load it up and take it to the bicycle store and say hey fix this flat and that, was, that was always my theory or call my wife come pick me up <laughs> But I'll give it a try. I think I'll give it a try. If it ever happens. I've never had it happen before. In all the years I rode. But I never went far before. This has been a nice little walk. And so you just walk, 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 walk. See the neighborhood? Nobody's out. Sunday morning. Half of them are probably still asleep. This is cool. We've been going 14 minutes. Nice walk, nice conversation. Listen to music. These are bone conducting headphones. I wear them when I'm on the bike. You want your ears open on bikes. You want to be able to hear the traffic. If you have earbuds, just put one in. That's it. You want the one near traffic to be open so you can hear. Like, whoa. Hey, though. You know, you want to, you want, you don't want a surprise. So you got your mirror going, you got your traffic. Stay in your lane, don't weave. 
when you're in a bike, you know, don't just suddenly start weaving. Cause the trick going uphill is to weave. And that gives you a little more, uh, more momentum, a little more physics, a little physics there. It gives you, but you gotta make sure no one's behind you. You can't just start jumping out. So, always know what's behind you. Stay safe. I had a little moped, vroom, zip, motorized, you know, it just zipped by me one day. I was like, oh, I didn't hear it. <laughs> uh, I heard it right at the last second, and I was like, Yum. off he goes. I was like, oh. But I was in my lane. It was a bike trail, and they have a little dividing, you know, or you can imagine they're dividing, right? And you're on the right. In America, you're on the right side. If you were in Britain, you'd be on the left side. And your mirror would be on the right side in Britain. But on, if you only get one mirror, it's on the left side because you're going to ride with traffic. If you have to go on the street for a minute and if you want to get off the street you know, you know some of you are like it's illegal to ride on the sidewalk and you're like yeah but if that car's coming a sidewalk's gonna look pretty good just yield to the pedestrians yield to the bikers watch out for scooters you know just do what you got to do to stay alive <laughs> that's what i always figured like I've locked, I've been at McDonald's, I've had to lock my bike and looking for a place, they had the flagpole. McDonald's is pretty big on that, on some places. So the flagpole's great. Here they've got these lights, this pole's good for lighting, locking up. If you had a pole like that, it's, you know, it's not too far, the bike can lean in, the chain can be pushed right at the bottom, right up against it, and you pull it. I've literally had my thing off the kickstand because the chain was so tight to get around it, or a tree, a little tree, and the bike's elevated off the ground. And I'm like, oh no. I'm like, oh well, it's, it's locked. Security on a bike, you, you want to lock it, you want to get in the habit. And if you want to do two or three locks, that's fine. Cable locks are kind of cheap, they're easy to cut. The D locks are, a lot of people say are the best, but a, a chain, can go around that tree or item better then the d-lock may not be have enough room and then what do you do some people add a cable which can be cut easy but it, it it's what they sell sometimes with d-locks to give you that extra bit of room and you're like well the cable's only good for like protecting the front wheel the advantage of locking up certain things in a certain order you want to protect your frame Always protect your frame, because that's the most valuable piece. If they're gonna grab it to sell it or strip it for parts, you make it, let them take the wheels. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, I bought this expensive seat. Oh, good, they're gonna take that. You know, I, I got these cool pedals. They might take that if they have the right tool. But most likely they're gonna steal the bike. They're not gonna have the technology to pick a lock, to so use a lock type chain or I've got a combination that I use sometimes. It goes around for a quick stop, go to the Circle K. I consider that a quick stop because I can kind of get in and out. I do lose sight of the bike when I'm inside, but I try to grab what I want, get in line and get out. Trick with signpost, if you hook it to a signpost, you know, it may not be legal in some areas. The police may say, hey, you're getting a ticket. You're blocking this handicap signpost. I'm like, no, it's on the front. Front, yeah. It like, doesn't matter. Someone might be in a wheelchair or disabled and you have a walker. You have to go around. And your bike could take a little hard for them, even if there's plenty of room. So if you do it, you do it at your own risk. But it's, sometimes it's hard to find a good place to lock. And the other thing with signpost is you want to make sure the bolts are in secure at the bottom. Some bike thieves know this. People like locking their bike here. Good. They take the bike bolts out or they loosen them up real good and you just lift the post up out of the ground grab the bike and throw it in the back of a truck or in a van and you drive off and you sell it until you find the next bike you want to make sure that pole's in the ground good <laughs> and those bolts are on there and you can't just grab it and lift it up off the ground they'll get you <laughs> so don't let it, that happen to you so walking, good exercise. We've been going 20 minutes.
Just rambling on. Good morning. Somebody. <laughs> yeah, you don't always get good mornings back, okay? And biking, walking, you get it, yay. If they just ignore you on their own, a lot of the cyclists that are on those racing bikes, they're on their own world. They're just pumping away. And if they're in a group, you're probably not gonna get a response because they're focused on the guy in front of them. Because the guy in front of them, if a squirrel jumps through, hopefully he just, I hate to say it, but he got to run them over or something. You can't just stop because all those guys are so close together. They'll all crash. And I 